Gaming Bolt presents 15 Crucial Tips and Tricks No Man's Sky Doesn't Tell You. No Man's Sky has, after years of hype and anticipation, finally launched, and the game, which essentially tasks the player with exploring an entire universe, has all the depth and nuance that you would expect from a game with a premise so ambitious. However, it doesn't help that the game, in spite of a rather extensive tutorial, doesn't make a lot of things clear, at least not right away. Here are 15 things that the game doesn't bother to tell you, or doesn't tell you too well at any rate, that are crucial tips that all players absolutely need to know. You have multiple separate inventories. No Man's Sky is effectively a game in which you'll be mining and harvesting resources from your environment. A lot. So it's important that you understand your inventory, because you'll be spending a lot of time in it. No Man's Sky essentially gives you three separate inventories. One for your ship, one for you, and one for your multi-tool. Keep track of what goes in what inventory, though you can always transfer things from your personal inventory into your ship's inventory at will, especially since you can't, for example, use something that's in the ship's inventory, nor can you use something on your ship that is in your own personal inventory. Don't mess with the local life or resources too much. Like we said before, the primary form of interaction with the worlds in No Man's Sky is collecting resources. You do this either by harvesting them from mines and nodes, or from life forms that you encounter on the planet. It's just, if you're too aggressive in how much of the local ecosystem you disturb, whether it's by attacking the local life or by mining and harvesting too many resources, you're going to end up pissing sentinel drones. Generally, just pace out your harvesting by spreading it out enough, and make sure to not attack actual animals and creatures too much, and you should be good. Drone Reinforcements but what happens if you did end up attracting the attention of a drone or two anyway? Well, you can either make a beeline and run from them, or you can try and fight them. Fighting them might not seem like the best idea, especially at first when you're vulnerable and defenseless, but it does have certain benefits. For example, if you have enraged drones, and you don't take them out soon enough, they will call for reinforcements, and more will come to attack you. Given that, it might not be a bad idea to try and take the first ones that engage you out, and to do it as soon as possible. Mining, crafting, dismantling, and harvesting resources. Mining resources is key. You need to have enough of them to sustain your life support systems and to craft essential items. Resources are also used to keep your ship fueled, and to repair your suit or your ship, should something go wrong. You can also craft important new items from resources you've collected, as well as dismantle items you find in the wild to gain important resources. Essentially, inventory management is the name of the game here, and make sure you stay ahead of the game. Hazardous Environment A lot of the planets in No Man's Sky are either too hot, too cold, too dusty, or have too much radiation, to be necessarily conductive to life, or to you in any case. Fortunately for you, this isn't something you need to worry much about, because your suit looks after you and repels these hazards away from you, mostly. Keep an eye on the hazard reading meter. The lower it falls, the more in danger you are, because the more your suit's ability to insulate you from danger has degraded. You can recharge your suit's ability to keep radiation and other hazards at bay by entering either your ship, or the various shelters and outposts that you come across while exploring the world. You need to manually refuel and recharge. While your radiation toxicity insulation and the like are automatically recharged each time you enter your ship or an outpost, you need to manually fuel up and recharge some other very important tools at your disposal. Your mining beam, which you use to break down nodes around you, as well as to engage in combat, must be manually charged in the inventory screen with the proper isotopes. This also holds true for your ship's engines and thrusters. If you're away from your ship or an outpost, you can even use your resources to recharge your suit's hazard insulation and life support. Shelters While you're out exploring the world, you may often find little question mark icons appear. If you make your way to them, you'll find that they often resolve themselves into outposts. Outposts are basically shelters for you to use. They give you some resources, they have a save point, and they also let you take a rest, and recharge your suit and life support. Do remember, however, that getting into an outpost does not recharge your mining beam or refuel your ship. Learn the UI the UI in No Man's Sky is largely simple, but also unexplained. So make sure you understand it completely so you know what's what while you're trying your best not to die on a hostile alien planet. This includes understanding how the radar works. That's the little crescent at the center top of the screen, where little icons that denote points of interest show up along it. If you line up one of these icons to the center, it means you're walking to it in a straight line. Then there's the radiation reading to the bottom left, as well as your jetpack and stamina meters to the bottom right. 
make sure you keep an eye on these. The last thing you want is to jump high using your jetpack, and then be unable to break your fall, because you didn't realize you were out of fuel and your jetpack needed to recharge. Scanning You can use the L2 button to scan any life you come across on the planet that you're on. Scanning life gives you information about the species, including its diet, habitat, temperament, and the gender of the specimen you scanned. Scanning a species lets you discover it, at which point you'll also get the honor of renaming it, should you want it, and scanning will also net you credits. Renaming Planets Renaming planets was one of the big things that No Man's Sky was marketed with when it was unveiled. Find your own planet and then name it what you want. But the game doesn't exactly make it clear how you're supposed to do that. It's actually fairly simple. After you've discovered and undiscovered a planet, just pull it open in your discoveries list in the menu, and you can rename it there if you want. Renaming Species Similarly, you may also rename any species you may happen to encounter, and which you have scanned. Once again, you just pull it open in your discoveries list, and then set the name to whatever you wish it to be. Now you too can name that species of funny-looking yellow rodents you found Pikachu. Scan Species Temperaments and Diets when you do scan a species, make sure you actually pay attention to what the readout in the bottom left reads. It will have information about the species' temperament and diet, which is essential information. For instance, if you see something that is carnivorous and or hostile and aggressive, you probably don't want to walk up to it, and you'll try to find an alternate route around it. On the other hand, if something is gentle and or non-meat eating, you could probably saunter right past it without much trouble. Knowledge Stones, Monoliths, and Plaques there are the relics of ancient civilizations that you will often come across as you explore other planets. Make sure to interact with them. Knowledge stones are the most common ones of these, and they teach you one word in an alien language, which means that the more of them you find, the more you can communicate with aliens. Monoliths, on the other hand, present you with cryptic challenges and puzzles, which, based on how you solve them, will change the course of your story and what happens to you. Finally, plaques can teach you either a word in an alien language, or give you blueprints that you can use to upgrade your gear. Mining Asteroids You don't just harvest resources when you're on the surface of a planet, though. You can also mine some when you're in space from asteroids. Shoot at the asteroids with your ship's equipped weapon to collect resources, which you can then use to recharge and refuel your ship. If you're stuck in a long-distance voyage in space and begin to run short on fuel, make sure to attack some asteroids so you can still make it to wherever it was you wanted to be going. Saving your game No Man's Sky is also a bit unclear on how you actually save your game, which is a bit of an important in-game function if you think about it. But it's really the simplest thing. All you have to do is get back into your ship or into a shelter or an outpost and your game automatically saves. That's it. You don't need to do anything more. Though you might want to get into the habit of uploading your discoveries to the servers, so they aren't just saved locally. Like this video? Why not give us a like and subscribe? We try and upload amazing videos almost every single day. Thank you for watching this video and we'll see you on the next one.